Hey everybody, welcome back to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and this is... Pet McDonald. And we're here to complete, finish, decimate our version, conclude. our playthrough of... Conclude... Above and Below. Above and Below. <laughs> Teamwork. Teamwork. Well listen, I have to first of all apologize for what happened during the last episode. Because normally we pick the viewer who gets the most votes. Yeah, we won't release this time. <laughs> I don't know We're what We're doing happens. a golf style. I think I got caught up in the story that I read, and I really liked it, so I need to apologize to Kasha Kunakai? Kasha, Kuna Kasha Kunakai. Right. Both for pronouncing your name poorly, and because you did get the most votes, and for some reason I didn't pick yours. I apologize but for It was that. like a landslide, too. It was a landslide. I mean, I completely <laughs> picked the wrong one. Sorry about that. This time, though, I made doubly sure to pick the one that got the most votes, which came from David Tai. And he says, Pep, go big or go home. Go for the Explore 7 action. And then James Orr wrote a really nice narrative, I thought, to go along with it. So we'll read that, and then we'll go to the table and see what happens. Just to recap, Andrea and Mr. Turtle were off on an extravagant adventure when they came across a powerful ancient archmage known as Gilgamesh. <laughs> That's, that's not at all true. They came across a magician, probably like a stage magician from a carnival or something, and the wagon was broken down. Yes, yes, this wagon, his chariot, was being pulled by a horde of jackalopes, which ran off into the distance there as was, we approached. There, there were some doves and a rabbit. There was no jackalopes. I think I'm mixing them together. Maybe. And he was brewing a fantastical There's... potion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen, just stop. They, they came across a, a magician in a broken down wagon. There's a rabbit fixing the wheel. And the conjurer offered to conjure something for them. Either a small something, something moderate, or something fantastical. And so the option that David went with was to conjure something fantastical. And James Orr created a nice little story here to go. Or, or who? Like, well, who's the other option? No, it's just James Orr. James Orr is his last name. Okay. <laughs> The conjurer waits expectantly when Mr. Turtle shows up. I like fish. Can you do fish? Andrea sighs and shoots him a sidelong glance. We can get fish anywhere. Go for something bigger. Mr. Turtle blushes a little brown and shuffles his feet deep in thought. Like a big fish? <laughs> the conjurer shrugs. I can, I can do fish. Andrea interrupts. Can you make cider? I'm not saying that it's a valued commodity in our community or anything, but... The rabbit, who can apparently talk, interjected, He doesn't do cider! After the Appleton incident! Mr. Turtle exclaims and points, A talking rabbit! Holy smokes! <laughs> Everyone else shares a questioning look at the talking frogman. <laughs> Andrea crosses her arms and puts her foot down. We'll take whatever the hardest thing that you can conjure is. Now, Pap, if I've done the math right, the only way for you to get to this Explore 7 is if you roll the highest values for each of these characters. So you have to roll at least a three for Andrea and at least a five for the Frogman and then exert both of them. Mm. But you do have how many re-rolls? Four. You're pushing your luck, but you have a little bit of luck mitigation to work with. You're rolling for Andrea first? I am. I have to admit, although we're opponents, I'm really pulling for you here. I like the guts of trying to go for a seven. And it's a flat seven. Right, because if you don't get the seven, there's no lower explore value you can fall back on. Yeah. It's this or nothing. Let's go, Andrea. Yes! Well, the nice thing here is you still have all four of your re-rolls for the Frogman, and admittedly, this is the hardest roll to make. Pep, good luck. Let's go, Mr. Turtle! Oh! oh no re-rolls! Double fives! No re-rolls. <laughs> it was meant to be. It was destiny. Why did I even buy these cards? <laughs> I th Why didn't even build these I only buildings? used a re-roll once, and it was for fun. Pep, I don't know about this <laughs> trick that the magician's about to do, Gilgamesh or whoever, mm. but your dice rolling was definitely fantastical. Well done. There is one downside. Even with those great rolls, you still have to exert both Andrea and the Frogman. Yeah. I, I don't know exactly how their exertion is helping make the Conjurer do better. Maybe. I think, woo, woo, yeah, they, they were cheering. cheering. Woo, and, go, man, uh, go. Andrea kind of sprained her ankle. She just twisted it the wrong way. Okay. And Mr. Turtle fell over on his back, and he can't get up now. Oh, oh that's, that's, that's too bad. Well, now you've got your Explore 7. Yeah. And it tells me I have to read paragraph 149. Oh. Hmm. So more reading. More reading. All right. Here's what it says. He encants as above, so below, and poof! Before you rest precisely what you asked for, the conjurer smiles and bows. His rabbit, plainly finished with his prepare work, rubs his oily paws, nods curtly, and disappears into his employer's hat. With the wagon now repaired, the conjurer hops back on. The two doves take the wagon's reins in their beaks, 
and pull it away into the darkness. Wow. It was the doves all along. It was. And here is your reward. You're going to love this. Because you get to choose what you want. Two amethysts, or two ore, or seven coins. Oh, I get to choose. You can have either two amethysts, or two ore, or seven coins. There's a lot of ore ores. There's a lot of ores. And thank you, James Orr, for your narrative earlier. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> uh, I almost want to pick the ore just so James Orr's story oration. Right. But I, I think I want the coins. I don't think the ore or the amethyst is going to help me that much, much because I only have one round left. So, Seven coins then for you? Yeah. All right, let's give you the seven coins and we'll go back to the table. Pep, here are your seven fantastical gleaming coins from the magician. Ch and, Ching! and you also get an additional coin each time you explore successfully, as shown on this building. I even put a coin here so we wouldn't forget. That's actually a good idea. Just leave a coin on the building, and that way, anytime you take that action, you remember to take the coin off and replace it with a new one. You know what? With that in mind, let's put two coins on there right now. And you also collect another empty cave. That's the end of the round. Look, we're moving to the next round now. We've got new cider to put out and a couple of new people to reveal. We have a gentleman here who can get, oh, look at that, three lanterns if you roll at least a four. It's a builder. And we have another lady here who's another builder, can get two lanterns from exploring. And she's got two pigtails. Right, we can't forget that. I'll refresh this good here. Resting my villagers is going to be easy because I have seven beds. I have seven exhausted villagers, so they'll just all slide over here. Pep, your situation's a little more complicated. Yeah, I'm going to leave Andrea and Mr. Turtle there. You know, they had a long day. I'm just going to let them rest. Okay. As for the others... To be uh, clear, though, you're not really letting them rest. You're leaving them with a sprained ankle and a sore back. Yeah, I mean, leave them rest on the road where they were. Okay, okay, just to be clear. All yeah, right. Yeah. As for the rest of the villagers, there are two of them who've been doing nothing but hard work and drinking cider since they got to this village. <laughs> okay, I know one of them then. <laughs> so Luke and Rodney, I'm going to leave them behind. They're going to get some extra rest, and I'm going to refresh the other five villagers. And just to be clear, when you say the extra rest, you mean you're leaving the old guy and the young boy outside. They're roughing it. They're camping. Oh, that's some bonding time. Yeah. I'll take the first player token, and we also have to get some money. Looks like we're both getting seven again. You're right. So seven for me, and seven for you. You know, when we started this story, Bart and his brother, they were in some conflict over Elizabeth. But I feel like Bart's been really growing as a person. He started out designing these simple rudimentary buildings. But he's really thrown himself into his work. He's finding a real sense of satisfaction there. And I think that's made him less inclined to be worried about winning the affections of Elizabeth. And now he's going to build his final masterpiece. A tribute to the woman who inspired him, a library. This large building that will produce papers and documents for the community. And that's going to cost me eight gold. And I'll reveal a new building here. This one provides one additional income, one point, and costs three gold. Marty has been spending a lot of time away from the village. We weren't sure why at first. It is because he found a young new wife to bring into the village. Oh, so you're going to train someone new? I am. It's going to cost me two money to bring young Vanessa into the fold. Hold on now. Are you, are you saying that Marty's marrying a former student? That doesn't seem appropriate. She's an adult student. <laughs> okay, all right, that's a little better. Well, as my community has grown, there's been a few different people who have built structures. And Reginald has definitely flourished building below ground. And I like to think that both he and Bart have really formed a mutual respect for each other. And with their shared knowledge and resources, I'm going to spend seven gold and build this rope producing structure because, as Pep will tell you, rope is great. Rope is perfect. Rope is everything you will ever need. I couldn't have said it better myself. You have to flip a new building over there for me. Uh, also true. And your next building is, ooh, this one produces amethysts and provides potion. I'm going to spend three money to buy this nice watchtower. It would have been much nicer to have this early on because of the bonus salary, but I'm mostly just going for points now. Right, because the building's worth a point, it also provides you with a point, so you spend three to get two points. And now that we have the reminders, every time I build, I need to take this coin. Oh yes, yeah, so you also got some more money. And let's see what gets revealed. This one here costs four and provides two flat-bottomed apple pears. And I mustn't forget to expend Scarlet. Now, you remember my cat is a little unpredictable because when I choose an action for it, I have to roll a die, and a three or more means that it will complete the action, otherwise it doesn't. To give myself the best odds, I'm going to have this cat go after some rope because we know cats love balls of twine. Show me a three. 
Huh? A five. These dice, I think they only roll fives. It seems like it. <laughs> I'm going to use these dice in all my other games. My cat is exhausted, and it's going to delightfully play with this twine that I've collected. You've really got the resource thing going on in this game. Yeah, at this point now, I think I'm just going to collect as many resources as possible, and that should hopefully give me a nice chunk of points at the end of the game. Well, my last action is going to score me some big points, too. What is it going to be? You'll have to wait to find out. <laughs> okay. Well, what's your next action going to be? I am going to send Pep off to gather some cider for the celebration party that we'll be having at the end of the game. Okay. Well, here's another coin to go along with that as well. You remember Stick here, he was beaten by that old man earlier in the game. And so he's thrilled to be in a community where he can relax and enjoy good food and, and good friends. So he's going to go out and harvest a flat bottom apple pear thing. All right, to start off, I'm going to take this potion back. It doesn't look like you're going to be buying it this round. <laughs> no, I guess not. And using that key building I bought quite early on in the game, I am going to recruit a villager. And I'm going to do it using only potions and ciders. Now what kind of villager? We just want a ton of liquid. Why, the fish man, of course. <laughs> it was a perfect setup for that. The fish folk are going to love the liquid goods. All right, so you've recruited this fish folk finned person. And I recruited the fish folk using Rodney Jr. He learned well from Rodney Sr. the merits of potions and ciders. I think Gunther has proven over the course of this game he's gotten a bit of a knack for exploring. So he's going to spend some time harvesting rope because, again, as we learned, Rope is great when you go exploring. Oh, looks like we forgot our reminder down here for whenever <laughs> I build a building. Yeah, so much for following our own tips. It's fitting to replace it as I'm about to take it again. Oh, and you have your mysterious last person. I don't think we have a name for her yet, right? Not yet. Will we ever find out? We will. So I'm going to spend 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 money. All of your gold. And with that, I will build a grand mansion so that no one will ever have to sleep again in the cold. Oh, like a communal building for everyone to be able to live in. Yes. And the masked woman pulls back her hood to reveal herself as Christy, Rodney's long lost wife, who had used her magic to escape the barbarians and was stuck in a temporal shift to retain her eternal youth. Yeah, she does look kind of young <laughs> for Rodney Sr. But again, there's no relation here, right, to real life? None. And with that, the family and the village is complete. And I will take this one extra coin to start off our new life. Now, Pep, it looks like you're out of workers. Before I take my turn, do you want to do something with that mushroom? Yes, I will plant it in the garden behind the mansion. Well, with my final two workers, I have Bartholomew and Elizabeth. And between these two, they not only found their final callings, but a fondness for each other. Bartholomew, who started by being at odds with his brother, found the value of seeing the best in other people and training them to be better versions of themselves. Something Elizabeth exemplified and admires herself. And so the two of them will work in the community's library, teaching and instructing new community members as they arrive. Now, Rodney, don't feel any pressure to put your resources into the slots. <laughs> right. You know, we, we could just end the game right no, now. No, I, I think it would probably suit me best to actually use these resources. And so I'm going to drop them into the different spaces. The fish I'll have to put here. The two ropes and the two parchments I'm going to put into these spaces. And then finally, these little fruits that you might not think are very valuable are going to end up being incredibly valuable as they go into the position that will provide five points each. I suppose you've been selling them to my village as my village only has rope and mushrooms. <laughs> and cider. And Loads cider. of ciders and potions. Well, I need the apples to right. make all that cider for Rodney. It's going to be a very good community synergy there, I think. Yeah. And that's, that's the end of the game except for the scoring. So let's add up our points now. Pep, let's start with you and your advancement track. How many points do you have there? Well, I only filled the bottom two sections, so each resource is only going to give me one. For a total of three. The rope wasn't as helpful as I had hoped. Not overall. But you did build a lot of buildings, and each structure gives you one point. And that's a total of 11. Now we also score your reputation, and to be honest, Pep, I'm not 100% sure how this works. Normally, if two people are tied, you would, for example, add the first and second position points together, divide them in two, and round up. But in a two-player game, the person who's farthest on the track would only get three points. You don't score for second, and obviously there's no third place. So either we both get three points, or you take the three points, divide it in two, round up, and we each get two points. Or we can just take nothing, as it's going to work out the same either way. Makes sense to me. But we do both get two points for reaching that level of the reputation track. Right. That we can be sure of. And finally, Pep, you get all the bonus points that you find on the buildings that you created. So quite a few of my buildings have bonus points on them. These buildings give me three, four, three, one, and two, 
which come to a total of 13. Also, my mansion gives me a bonus two points for every villager I have. Which is probably why you went on that crazy recruiting drive towards the end of the game. Indeed. And in the end, I came out to a total of 11 people, so 22 extra points. Pep, that's a total of 51 points. Oh, I think you might be higher. Let's find out. Well, one thing this community excelled in was certainly collecting a variety of different goods. And adding up all of these together, it's 47 points. You almost have as many points and resources as I have in general. Yeah, you're right. 47 to your 51. I think in all the other areas, though, I'm not going to fare quite as well. But I am getting nine points for nine completed buildings. You don't get any points for empty caverns. I'll get the two points here for the reputation, like you did. And then building bonuses, I only have the two points showing on this one here. And that leaves me with a total of... 60! And there you have it, above and below. Good game, Pep. Good and game! Ah, good. This is a weird handshake. It's an above and below handshake. <laughs> it's above and below. Okay. And it's interesting how, you know, we both took two very different strategies, but ended up with pretty similar points in the end. I really thought I was going to blow you away. I thought with all the goods I'd collected, but, you know, collecting the people and getting that bonus yeah, point, the, it closed the, the gap, didn't it? Yeah. Listen, I hope you enjoyed playing along with us. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below, and we'll gladly answer them as soon as we get a chance. But until the next episode, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. Well, you know what? It's good to be prepared. Uh, there's one, uh, and hmm. <laughs> there's a rabbit. He offered to do some kind of conjuration. The rabbit did? No, the <laughs> son of a gun. <laughs> Andrea and Mr. Turtle were off on a startlingly amazing. Ex <laughs> Andrea and Mr. Turtle were on a startlingly. <laughs> Andrea and Mr. Turtle were on a startlingly ling Andrea and Mr. Turtle were on a startlingly That word's beyond your capacity. <laughs> startlingly.